Hi, I'm Tony Fleming and welcome to Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Anyway, thanks for joining us on today's British Video Day. Hello, how are you? Allow myself to introduce myself. Anyway, Triumph TR4 Convertible 1964. I know the year well because I was born in that era. Maybe before, maybe not. Just throwing that out there. Anyway, does it really matter? But what we do remember is this. We do remember that we had friends and things like that that had really cool cars that we couldn't afford. At least I did. I couldn't afford it. And so now, I have a chance to be able to drive one and own one and watch a car like this go up in value. Say, Tone, how could you possibly know this car is gonna go up in value? You're absolutely right, but I can tell you this, that this car, for what it's selling for right now and the book value that it's worth, right? The book value is actually more than this that we're selling it for, but the book value is a lot more than it was when it was brand new, and that's why this hobby is so much fun, and that's why it's so great to get into it. When in fact, you can drive these cars, watch them go up in value over time, and still have some great fun in it. You can imagine what it's like to go to work on a Friday, right? Drive a car like this instead of your daily driver, man. First off, everybody loves the car when they see it. You're getting this everywhere you go. Secondly, it's wind in your hair, it's a sound, it's a feel. This car is modern, modern in the sense that it has disc brakes in it. It has rack and pinion steering. It's not like a really old, old car, like a 50s vintage American car, which is still a cool car, but drives like a really old car. This does not, and these cars right here, you can tell by the style, are continuing now to really get exciting in the marketplace, and you could miss the curve. So let's figure out how, let's figure out today how to get this one to your life, all right? So let's talk about the restoration a little bit. Love the paint on this car, love the paint, all right? British racing green, hard not to like that on a British car. So this car here was restored. It was restored a little while ago, and now we're refreshing the car for you. So we're doing a couple little things, and what I want to do is do the video before we got to finish the car up so you could see what we do and see, okay, wow. So they don't really just put some spray wax on the car, right? and uh, let it go. For instance, we went ahead and stripped the wheels, right? Took the tires off, completely bead blasted the wheels, repainted those so you can see how nicely painted the disc brakes are in there. Then we buffed and wet sanded the rest of the car. We tightened up the interior, even though upholstery was great, it had just been sitting for a little bit, so we took it all apart, tightened everything up, and it looks really good. The undercarriage, we detailed that as well, which you can see in the pictures. We haven't got to detail the engine compartment yet, but I'll show you what it looks like because it actually looks great before we even got to it, all right? So let's take a peek under the hood. We'll check that out and see uh, what the motivational force is from there. All right, before we get under there, I love this, man. This is a cool piece. This is for uh, the carbs that were too big, uh, that would sit up too high, and it became a styling piece of the car itself, which I think looks really great. A lot of times, you'll see like Vipers and some of the, uh, like, uh, the GT40s and what have you, it had the bubbles on the top. That was called a gurney bubble, and the reason it was called a gurney bubble is Dan Gurney was so tall that he couldn't fit in the race car, so they actually built a bubble on top of it and became a styling piece in many cars. It became acceptable at that time because they were winning races, and if you're winning races, it's cool. So we might as well put it on a regular car, all right? So we're looking under here at the detail. Uh, we've checked all this out here. We got our original style engine in here. We got our downdraft carburetors on here for a little extra power. Uh, detailed radiator, you can see all the wiring is new in here, right? We haven't even got into detailing and painting the little stuff like bolts and what have you that we normally do, uh, and we do that. This has, ahead of its time, two braking systems in there. A lot of people don't notice that, but uh, American cars originally had just one pot, and if the pot went bad, the brakes went bad in that one little pot, no brakes. Here, we have a backup system, make sure that we got brakes all the time. They were ahead of the game here. These cars have great corner speed, and they're actually a lot faster than people think, so it's good to be able to go fast, but it's also even better to stop. All right, a couple of styling things too. So for instance, like you'll look at a car and go, wow, that's a great looking car. But a lot of times you don't know why it's a great looking car. The bubble on the hood, the headlight extensions that are on there. This flip style gas cap that's here, right? 
all looks like it's just so cool as part of it. These latches that are on the outside of the trunk, they didn't have to do that. They did this for style. These are all done purposely, all right? The wire wheels, the way this comes around the back like this, the TR4 badge, I took this badge off here because I'm ordering a new one. I want to make sure we have the right one so it's on uh, the person's desk who's going to get it. When the car gets to you, it'll have the correct badge on it. I just wanted you to see that, all right? And see over here, a couple things like they've given some thought to. This holds the trunk open. We got our convertible top here with our side windows and things like that. We got our spare tire, detailed and painted trunk, new gas tank, things like that. This appears to be a period correct original 1964 tire, which I thought was pretty cool. We didn't take it off there. Uh, I think if you want a really good spare tire, you should probably replace that. But I just wanted you to see it because it looks so cool. And I just thought it was so original. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And you lift it right back up, very much like the Corvettes had. And there you go. So before we get in here, this, believe it or not, is a four-passenger convertible. You say, well, Tony, how is that possible? Well, it's designed, right? Maybe I'm not going to sit back here and drive two and a half hours to the beach with the kids to go for ice cream or dinner or uh, head out with some, or put the dog or the pet, the cat, whatever pet, maybe you have a llama, small llama, but maybe a llama. Maybe you have a baby goat. I love goats. Goats and baby goats are even better. Maybe a baby goat could go back there, right? Anyway, uh, the interior is beautiful. It's been redone, right? And so as we get in through here and we get to see some of the things, like for instance, we were talking about uh, finishing up the restoration on here. This car has seat belts and it has new carpet and things like that, but I don't like the horn button. The horn button is original circa 1964. When this car was restored, this wasn't available, okay? This is now available and now we've been able to order that. So now we'll be able to replace that and this right here will be a really nice piece to it. The shifter right here, this has been updated because it was available and when during the restoration it was done, all right? The glass in the car appears to be all original and we need to buff that, right? We need to finish that up. And these are the little things that we'll have done before uh, we send it to you. But the car just arrived. I want to make sure we got it out there. So just in case uh, you're looking for something like this, you didn't miss out on it. But British Racing Green and Tan, awesome. The wood dash, awesome. Full array of Smith's gauges. So these are high-end gauges. They're the best you could get, right? 6,000 RPM tack, 120 mile an hour speedometer versus the 100 mile an hour speedometer on many other British sports cars, and a full array of temp, oil, amps, and fuel gauge right here in the dash. And if you wanted to, uh, we could hide a modern sound system inside the glove box here. This way you kept the dash all stock looking, but you could take your cool tunes with you and put everything inside there and play whatever decade of music you wanted. All right, I wanted to close the video up in here because you know what? A lot of times from the outside, these cars look like they're small, but they were packaged really well. For instance, I'm 6'1". I look like I'm a four-year-old in this car. I have tons of leg room in here. I almost can't even reach the pedals. I have the seat slid all the way back. So that leaves some room for the people behind you. Or if you're a big guy, gal, whatever, there's plenty of room. There's space in here. You don't feel like you're jammed in here riding around in your go-kart. It's really, really just a comfortable, great car. The reason I talk about it so much is because, first off, it's beautifully restored. Now we've refreshed the car, right? And taking it to work or going away on a weekend or something like that, man, see the smile I'm getting already? It's because that's what it does to you, knowing that you're getting in the car and it makes a sound that your everyday car does not make. Uh, makes it all the worthwhile. Anyway, call us 301 816 1000. We'll tell you all about the 64 Triumph TR4. Don't forget to click on the link below for. Uh, uh, pictures, descriptions, some pricing, see some of our other cars as well. Also, uh, don't forget too to talk about it. If you had a friend that owned one of these, tell us about that. Or maybe you rode around in one back in the day, or maybe you shoved a V8 in one and you want to tell us about that because God knows we all love power, don't we? And uh, lastly, don't forget to subscribe to us as our subscriptions grow. Uh, we love to be part of your lives too.